a journey to where nature is at her most magnificent and forbidding. To mysterious places where dazzling and diverse cultures flourish, where China's numerous ethnic groups draw you into a world of color and vibrancy, where distinct lifestyles, traditions, and crafts have survived the test of time. Join Travelog on its 17-part Ethnic Odyssey, visiting more than 100 places across China. Ethnic Odyssey, an enlightened look at China's rich ethnic heritage. In this episode of Travelog, explore the ancient history and beautiful culture of Yunnan's Bai people, industries clever, patient, and artistic. Get a taste of life in their world. Variety of China's landscape, diversity of its people. Welcome to Travelog. Welcome to our minority series. This episode, I'll take you to Dali of Yunnan province to experience Bai minority culture and experience the Asian town created more than a thousand years ago. Yunnan, though a province of China, is in many aspects a part of Southeast Asia. This is the case because it is populated not only by Han Chinese, but by a large number of minorities who have been living here for as long as history has been recorded. Actually, one of the dominant ethnic groups of Yunnan, the Bai people. Kunming is the capital of Yunnan province. However, Dali is more popular in terms of tourist attractions. Dali, some 400 kilometers to the west, is located near a major lake, Erhai Lake. And like Kunming, Dali lies at an altitude of about 1,900 meters. The main attraction of Dali is probably the surrounding countryside. To the west lies the Changshan mountain range with peaks well above 4,000 meters and a large number of most picturesque Buddhist temples. Yunnan is probably the most colorful and the most diverse province in China. The particular ethnic mix certainly contributes to its fact. Actually, Yunnan is among the ethnical most diverse regions not only of China, but of all of Asia. comparable in diversity to its neighbor in the south and east. For many centuries, Dali was the principal city of Yunnan, far more important than Kunming. Dali was the capital of the Nan Chao Kingdom, which made its power fell deep into China. Much later, in the mid-19th century, Dali was replaced by Kunming as the capital of Yunnan. Erhai Lake is a major site of Yunnan tourist attractions. In China, it is the largest highland lake next to Dianchi. The dimension is 41.5 kilometers by 8.4 kilometers, with an average depth of 10 meters, covering an area of 250 square kilometers. It would be a great pleasure for the tourists to go for a boat ride on this crystal water of the lake. 
In New Stone Age 4,000 years ago, the forefathers of Bai ethnic began from the Changshan Mountain and Erhai Lake as their center to live and multiply in Yunnan province. They started an agriculture culture on the plain near the rivers and lakes. This region is Dali. During the late period of Shang Dynasty to West Han Dynasty, the Bai ethnic created splendid bronze culture of Erhai Lake. Erhai, also they call it sea. Actually, it's a lake. It's a huge lake. And there are many options here. The one of the biggest tourist attractions to get on the cruising ship. The ship have like four or five floors, it can hold hundreds of people. There are many entertainments, majorly showing the bi minority culture. For example, they have singing, dancing, and the well known freestyle tea. The bi began to plant tea and make tea long ago. They have formed their unique tea culture on tea drinking, the tea tasting called Three Places of Tea of Bai Ethnic. That's a tradition, freestyle tea. It's the first one as it's dancing, music, and providing the tea. They're freestyle. First round is bitter. Second round is sweeter. The third round is different. It's called taster. Xizhou Township is a typical area fulfilled with Bai people and well represent its house and cultural style. Nowadays, the Bai ethnic village in Dali has become a unique landscape, and it is a beautiful sizing resource of Yunnan province. With its long history, its customs, ethnic songs and dances, Construction arts are all worthy to visit for you. I suggest if you travel to Dali, go to have a look at the Bai ethnic village, visit the Bai families, and taste that all known three paces tea. I believe you will have a travel worthy aftertaste. Yan family's property, however, is the landmark of Xizhou residents of Bai minority group. Wood carvings in the residential buildings are another trademark of Bai, which strongly presents the art history of Bai spirit. Bai minority group have its unique design in terms of house and residential buildings. For example, here in Xizhou Township, Yan's family is one of the wealthy family. This design, here is his house. The design is very unique, it represents their style. For example, the three sizes of house, living room right there, facing the east. And facing the living room, there's a big screen, painting it all white. Guess what? That's for the lighting. In the afternoon, when sun goes down, this big screen reflects all the lights given to the living room and all the room around it. So this is design. And then we go inside, there's more designs. They're all like it's two floors, the first floor for families, living room, the major, you know, master of the house living the right, and the maid, number one son living the left, and rest of them for the rest of the families. And the second floor mostly for guests or the female uh, house members. Batik style on clothes with a typical color such as blue is Bai's specialty. 
A batik style fabric has been done in the following steps. First, use a plastic material lay on original white material. Second step: tie the clothes with hands in various style. Then use needles pin through the patterns. The third step of batik is to dye the materials with organic products such as leaves and flowers. Every print in the Bai minority is handmade. If you visit a studio like this, it's they made every single piece. It's a piece of art. It takes a long time, even though it looks like simple design, but the whole procedure takes a long time. I really, after a visit here, I really appreciate all this material. After all the dye and tie, it comes to the easy step: dry it out. The very last step is to untie all the knots and release the fabric in a natural way. An amazing design will come out once the fabric is dry. Bai also has many well-known silversmiths who have been creating many business opportunities for local people. Silver products is very famous in Bai minority, and among all those minorities, this village, Xinhua Village, is well known for making the silver products. There are total 1,400 families. 900 or two out of those are craftsmen making those silver products. I walked into this Xinhua village, which has 92. I said two and a third of the families are silversmiths. Among all the silversmiths, Mr. Chun, Chun's family is the largest one. Can you hear that? Those are the silversmiths making products right there. The history of silversmiths in Bai has been started in about. 2,500 years ago, nowadays, silversmiths in Yunnan have a unique business position in China nationwide, especially at the Xinhua Village of Dali. Tourist buses come in and out of the little village, bringing hundreds of visitors from all over the world to buy silver products. Believe it or not. 80 percent of the entire village population is related to the silver business. It's all products made from this house, and this is their patented design, called Nine Dragons Pot for drinking, and this is cost about ten thousand RMB. And this one, the big one, is very, very detailed. The one with the dragon design. This is the hot pot, which is very popular in southern China. You know, when they're cooking in a restaurant, there's a hot pot. But this is not a regular hot pot. This is a special design with all silver. You can open it up. The layers put hot water, food there. It cost forty thousand RMB. Today, Mr. Chun Fabiao of Dali, a famous silversmith, made his fortune out of silver products. Orders from all over the world come in to Mr. Chun's production line that includes teapot, hot pot, liquor glass, even personal statue. On my way back to hotel, traffic took us to an unexpected event that later found out it's a local large religious festival. In addition to their Azaki Buddhism, the Bai also propitiate local folk deities, known as Benju or village lords, 
that function within society in ways similar to, but in some ways, intrinsically different from popular gods in Han Chinese community. A village's primary banju may have a spouse and family, and some of the primary village banju are female. And most often, his or her identity is explained on the basis of a mythical historical story of local significance. In some cases, the banju of neighboring village are related, but there is no concept of a unifying celestial hierarchy as a Han Chinese population religion. Offering of sacrificed chickens and other animals are common, in search of all the most wished for benefits of ordinary life, health, longevity, wealth, and male offspring. And although the overall structure of offering rituals is similar to that of Han Chinese rituals, a unique assemblage is achieved through the use of chants in the Bai language. Local dance and song forms, and traditional Bai Fu stuff. Pray to the Three Spirits. Three Spirits stands for three locations of temples. On Chinese calendar, the holiday starts from April twenty-third. To 25th, that the people take in group, visiting all the locations and seeing their thoughts and communication in Bai language. The Three Pagodas, though not as famous as those on the Three Pagodas Pass between Thailand and Myanmar, are among the oldest still existing architectural structures in all of southwestern China. The tallest of the three was built in the ninth century and reaches a height of some seventy meters. The two small pagodas are about forty-two meters high. Chongsheng Temple is famous for this Chongsheng Pagoda. It was built 1,200 years ago. Back then, in the northern China, it's Tang Dynasty, here called Nanzhao Kingdom. Back then, it's a mountain culture in this area. For example, this pagoda is a perfect example. It built 16 layers, 16 levels, instead of odd numbers. And also, it has a big eagle on the top, representing a bi-minority group. And also. In Tang Dynasty, it's like bigger feature and enjoy fatter feature. So the pagoda, like that, the different shape. On the other hand, two smaller pagodas on the sides are built in Song Dynasty. A totally different style. Anyway, so this pagoda, famous not only for the structure, also represent a mountain culture in this area. On the way to the Jianchuan Stone Caves, I found many Buddha statues and many temples on the road. Jianchuan started in 1,100 years ago. The entire area spreads to three locations with 17 caves. Jianchuan Stone Cave is a valuable source for history studying of Nanjiao Kingdom. It contains four parts. One, worship female body is a strong religious form. It also worship village lord or called Banju. For example, the king of Nanjiao Kingdom. After Buddhists came to Delhi from India, the religious in this area has been blended with various elements. 
但这个霍军的艺术水准相当高，比清明上河图还长四倍，有六百二十八个历史人物。就到底国为什么在历史上这么亮相蓬勃？会有这样的一种佛教成就，就证明这个地方，它当时是通往印度的一个古道，已经把印度的佛教，当时的这个，呃，命宗教派，还有中原的佛教，还有东南亚的这些佛教，全部都融合在这个里面For thousands of years, there was an ancient road traded by human feet and horse hooves in the mountains of southwest China. The Asian Commercial Passage, duped as the Asian Tea Horse Road, first appeared during the Tang Dynasty and last till the 1960s when Tibetan highways were constructed. Meanwhile, the road also promoted exchanges in culture, religion, and ethnic migration, resembles the refrigerance of the Silk Road. The road stretched across more than 4,000 kilometers, mainly in southwest China's Sichuan and Yunnan provinces and the Tibetan Autonomous Region. Just as the Silk Road, the Asian Tea Horse Road disappeared with the germ of modern civilization. But both roads have played very important roles in the development of China. Different Chinese ethnic cultures such as Thai, Yi, Han, Bai, Nashi, and Tibetans have met, fused, and developed along the historical road. The old tea horse road ran across the Hengduan Mountains and the Qinghai Tibet Plateau in an area of the most complicated geological conditions and most diversified organisms. Besides its cultural and historical value, the road was also highly appreciated by adventurers and scientists. In a modern day today, no doubt, everywhere becomes a tourist attraction. Dali attracts many tourists from all over the world. Sidengjie, located in Shaxi town of Jianchuan, which is the only Asian street left from the old Silk Road, or called Tea Horse Road. As every visitor knows, come to Dali, you gotta come visit the old town, the ancient town. It's culture mix. You can find old times like the buildings, structure, decoration, everything, you know, with the history. And also you can find a modern style, like coffee shop, bars, restaurants, you can even order pizza here. So it's a very good place, especially for a weekend, for chill out, Saturday, Sunday afternoon, just sit around watching people and uh, drinking coffee or beer, whatever you prefer. That's all for our program of Dali. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.